welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brianna and welcome. As you can tell by the title of this video, this is going to be a little bit of a information filled video because I'm going to be talking about something that I have recently been diagnosed with and that is narcolepsy type 1. I actually wrote down like a couple sheets of paper about what I really want to talk about because there is so much that I want to talk about but I don't want to like word vomit on everyone. So the reason I'm making this video is because when I first was diagnosed, I instantly got on YouTube and I searched what it's like to live with it and I don't know, I just didn't find that much. But I just kind of wanted to sit down and make my own video about like how I've lived with it for the past probably like eight plus years. So if you are watching this because you were recently diagnosed, I'm gonna kind of put on the screen right now sections to this video in case you're wondering like specifically what causes it or how to treat it or how to deal with it. I'll just kind of put like the sections that I'm gonna make in this video right here so you can like skip to that time. So the reason I am posting this video on March 13th is because it's actually World Sleep Day. If you're wondering when exactly World Narcolepsy Day is, I think it changes each year, but I think it's always held on a Sunday because it's called like Suddenly Sleepy Sunday that's specifically for narcolepsy. And the funny thing is that actually landed on my birthday last year which was September 22nd so I think it's around like that second to last week in September is when it usually falls. The reason why World Sleep Day is in March is because a lot of sleep disorders are actually autoimmune and March is actually autoimmune disorder like awareness month so later in this video I'll talk about how exactly narcolepsy is technically an autoimmune disorder but if you are someone who has an autoimmune disease or know someone who has an autoimmune disease and you're watching this in March then just maybe reach out to them because this month is awareness to them. So the first section I'm going to be including in this video is a little bit about me. So to start off my journey with narcolepsy, I was diagnosed technically in January 2020. So literally only two months ago. Even though I was only diagnosed two months ago, I personally feel like I have been living with this disorder for quite a long time. I can just always remember being that girl in school who would like fall asleep in class, fall asleep in study hall, just literally fall asleep whenever. I just struggled, like even in tests, I literally had to hand in an exam, a math exam to be specific. I had only done two questions because I had fallen asleep during the exam. I don't really know what people thought about me, but I literally had to retake a math exam because I fell asleep during it and I had no good explanation for it. Another thing that I remember a lot in middle school and high school was falling asleep right when I got home. So I've been in sports for as long as I can remember. So my days consisted of like going to school from seven to three, practice from three to six, and then I'd get home and then four, I would even sit down at the dinner table. I would be zonked in my bed. Like I never got homework done. I would always do homework like in school and other classes, just not productive. My parents had to constantly wake me up like, oh, Brianna, dinner's ready. Like wake up and obviously I just thought that was because I was running myself thin I was just always busy like a lot of people are in high school but I just thought nothing of it because I was doing the same thing as other people and I knew that like I was running myself thin but I didn't think I had like an actual sleeping problem it was just really inconvenient I literally can't sit in the car for more than like five or ten minutes like if I'm not talking to someone I will fall asleep if anything it's just really annoying so probably like sophomore junior year in high school I started noticing other symptoms besides just the daytime sleepiness. So I'll get into the symptoms in a little bit. Basically, I just remember having those symptoms start in high school and that's how I know that I've been experiencing this um, disorder for more than at least five years. Okay, so the next section I'm gonna be talking about is like the science behind narcolepsy. So although there are people in this world who have really bad narcolepsy where they literally do fall asleep wherever, whenever, and like there are cases that do have that, so I'm not gonna like say that there aren't. But okay, basically, if you are someone who knows nothing about science or anything about autoimmune disorders, for narcolepsy specifically, there is chemicals in your brain that play important roles in like your wake and sleep patterns. So specific with narcolepsy, there is a hormone in our brains that are produced that's called hypocretin. And that hormone specifically helps our brain stay awake. So it's released in our brain to let our brain know that we should not be sleeping during the day because we don't need to. And basically what it does is it prevents your brain from going into REM and non-REM sleep during the day. So hypocretin is a chemical. It's also called a neuropeptide. So what makes this autoimmune is that my immune system for some reason tells my brain to not produce that hypocretin so in turn my brain doesn't know when it can or cannot fall into REM sleep so that wakefulness from hypocretin is missing in my brain so this depletion or like sometimes like non-existent chemical 
level in our brain is really the main source of all of our symptoms that we have with narcolepsy. So not only is my daytime wakefulness interrupted with sleepiness, but my nighttime sleepiness is also interrupted with wakefulness. Without this hormone or neuropeptide, whatever you want to call it, basically my daytime, my nighttime is interrupted because I don't have that regulation hormone. To give you guys kind of a perspective, when I got my sleep test done, I woke up probably on average of like at least 10 times an hour, but yet I was asleep for 96% of the night. So I would wake up and fall asleep within like seconds, multiple times throughout the night. Okay, the next section is going to be causes. So really, the cause of narcolepsy is unknown. The only real cause we know of is this depleted hypocretin that I was talking about. Um, a little statistic is that it occurs equally in men and women. Like you're not gonna have a higher chance of getting narcolepsy if you are a man or if you're a woman. So in the US, another little statistic is about 200,000 people actually live with narcolepsy but that number kind of doesn't really mean much because so many people are misdiagnosed like for me if my disorder wasn't affecting my college career and like my grades and stuff I probably would have never gotten a sleep test and I would have never been diagnosed and that can happen in so many cases another thing about narcolepsy is that it's not necessarily genetically linked but it can be so if my dad or mom had narcolepsy I could get it most cases are actually not genetically linked so because it's autoimmune you could be born with it, but you could also acquire it. Really rarely, you could actually have it from like a brain tumor or a brain bleed. Just like any damage to your brain could obviously cause your cells to like not produce hormones because they're like damaged or dead. Okay, so the next section I'm gonna be talking about are symptoms of narcolepsy. So really there are four staple symptoms of narcolepsy and I'm sure there are more, but these are the four that like are most common. And the interesting thing that I found when I was researching this was that really only 20 25% of the 200,000 people diagnosed have all four of these and that really interests me because I have all four of these and only one-fourth of the people who have narcolepsy have all four so a lot of people deal with like one two or three of these but not all four so the first one is the obvious one the daytime sleepiness and that's kind of abbreviated to just EDS because it's abbreviated for excessive daytime sleepiness the second symptom is cataplexy and this is probably the one that's most commonly not um, a symptom that everyone has. If you don't know what cataplexy is, I'll have the definition right here, but basically it's when your body suddenly goes into REM sleep. It sounds really crazy, but for me, what triggers my cataplexy is laughter. So when I laugh really hard, or even if I think something's just really funny for just a second, like my face will droop, my muscles will become weak, my knees will buckle, and like my brain just for one second goes into REM sleep, and that's why like I basically almost faint. For example, my doctor literally gave me this example, fainting goats, like fainting goats have cataplexy not that they necessarily have narcolepsy but fainting goats when they get scared like everything buckles and they just faint so so it just causes muscle weakness and slurred speech and so that's why when I laugh in front of people I like always cover my face because like I just droop and I'm sure it's not cute so the third symptom is hallucinations and this is something that I didn't always have like I feel like I've had narcolepsy for the past 10 years but I feel like my hallucinations have like just started when I was like a junior in high school so probably about five years ago. I personally don't have hallucinations during the day. I mean, granted, if I'm taking a nap during the day, then I will, but my hallucinations really only come at night. When I was doing research for this, I found that there were two different types of hallucinations, specifically for narcolepsy, that is. The first one is, I don't know if you pronounce the G's in this word as in like a G or a G, hypnagogic or hypnagogic. I I don't know. But basically that's when you hallucinate as you're falling asleep. So like that's like self-explanatory. So as you're falling asleep, like you're hallucinating a little bit. And then the other one is hypnopompic. And that's when you're hallucinating as you're waking up. I honestly don't know which one I have more because I hallucinate so much when I fall asleep. But then I also feel like I'm hallucinating when I'm waking up. So this kind of all ties in with the fourth symptom, which is um, sleep paralysis. I guess I kind of get confused with sleep paralysis and hallucinations because oftentimes when I'm dreaming, I think I'm hallucinating because they feel so real. And then I also feel like I'm having sleep paralysis because I know I'm dreaming, but I can't wake up. Honestly, I don't have medications that help them. I only have one medication and that's specifically to help with my daytime sleepiness. So I only have a medication that really helps with one of my symptoms. I don't have a medication that helps with my cataplexy, hallucinations, 
or sleep paralysis. So if you have those or even one, two or three of those, I would suggest talking to your like practitioner or your doctor or your physician's assistant, whatever you may have as your family doctor because those are the four like staple symptoms of narcolepsy. Okay, the next section I'm gonna be talking about are the two different types. So they're really simple to remember. I have type one because I have cataplexy. So if someone has narcolepsy and they don't have cataplexy, that means they have narcolepsy type two, if that makes sense. So type one, narcolepsy with cataplexy, type two, narcolepsy without cataplexy. Okay, so the next section I'm gonna be talking about is the actual diagnosis of narcolepsy. So I actually made a vlog style video about my whole journey with being diagnosed about two months ago in January. So if you wanna go check out my like actual sleep study and how I went about going to the doctors and what the doctor said and how I was actually able to get a sleep study, then go check out that vlog because it's not as easy as it seems to get a sleep study and there are a couple steps. So if you go watch that video, I'm sure you will find a lot more information there. But basically there are three ways to get diagnosed with narcolepsy. So the first one that you will have to do to get diagnosed is go through a sleep study. And the big long word for that is on the screen right now, it's a polysomnogram. I think I said that right. And that's abbreviated for a PCG. And that's basically just your one night overnight sleep study. And that really isn't the definitive diagnosis for narcolepsy because really what it's doing is ruling out sleep apnea. So like a lot of disorders, you have to rule out what they think it might be before they actually diagnose you with what you actually have, if that makes sense. I could be having daytime sleepiness because I'm not sleeping good at night because I have sleep apnea. So you have to rule out that sleep apnea before you can get diagnosed with narcolepsy. So basically what happened that night is that they measured my brain activities and my muscle activities, my breathing and my eye movements so that they knew when I was going into REM sleep and when I would stop breathing if I did. Luckily, I didn't stop breathing, so I was ruled out sleep apnea. So the second test that they will do is called an MSLT test, and that's only if you didn't have sleep apnea. So say you went for a sleep test and you have sleep apnea, you would need to be treated for that first, and then they would bring you back to do this nap test. So luckily for me, I didn't have sleep apnea, so I was able to stay the next day and do these nap tests. Like I said, it's an MSLT test, and that stands for multiple sleep latency tests. And just like it says, I take multiple sleep nap test um, for the whole day basically. I don't really know when or at what point they found out that I had narcolepsy, but a lot of the research that I was doing, it states that if you go into REM sleep twice within the five naps that you take, that finding is significant with narcolepsy. You take a nap every two hours, so I woke up at seven, I took a nap at nine, 11, one, and I would have taken one at three. They basically give you, I think 10 minutes or 15 minutes to fall asleep. And if you do fall asleep, they let you sleep for 15 minutes. I fell asleep for all of them, which means I took four 15 minute naps that day. And that's the second test that they would do for you. And pretty much those are the two that you would need to be diagnosed because those are the only two I did to be diagnosed. But say you did the polysomnogram and you did the MSLT test and you still feel like you have narcolepsy, but they didn't find anything because it wasn't significant. What you could do is then get a spinal tap. And if you've ever heard of a spinal tap or if you've even had one before, you know they're not fun. I've seen one in person. It doesn't seem that great, but the reason why you would get that is because um, a spinal tap basically tests for that hypocretin. So they would tap your spinal fluid and see if you have that hypocretin in there because if your hypocretin levels are low, they know that your brain either isn't producing it or it is producing it and somewhere else your immune system is killing it. So the spinal tap is kind of the last resort if you want to see if you have narcolepsy, but the sleep test didn't work. I hope this is all making sense to you. If it isn't, please leave any questions you have in the comments because I kind of have been doing so much research on this, I know a lot about it. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna be talking about are the treatments. So really, narcolepsy has no cure. It is a lifelong disorder and there's no way you're gonna have it and then all of a sudden you're not gonna have it. A lot of people say that the symptoms get better as you get older. I don't really know if that's true, but some people say that. So when I was talking to my doctor, she kind of gave me two options. Before I was even diagnosed, she said you could either take medications to help with your symptoms because you don't have to have medications. Like you don't have to treat it. You could really just manage it with whatever you like please, but you could take medications or you could do like a nap slash caffeine daily regimen. So for medications, we'll just start with that. Um, basically, if if you are in the medical field, if you know anything about medications, you would know that stimulants is one of the major medications that people get with narcolepsy. So with that daytime sleepiness, all you really need to do to treat that is give yourself a stimulant. And obviously those are not easy to get. So really that stimulant will 
treat your daytime sleepiness and then sometimes depending on the medication it will also help with you staying more asleep at night so you're not waking up as often and therefore that will also help you stay more awake during the day because you're getting better sleep another medication that people take for narcolepsy specifically for the cataplexy is antidepressants so I'm personally not on an antidepressant so I don't really know exactly how that treats the cataplexy so if I find out answers about why antidepressants treat cataplexy I'll put that on the screen and you can like pause it and read it but the stimulants and the antidepressants are really the two things that people take to treat their narcolepsy but um, my doctor specifically recommended stimulants so that is what I'm on if you are someone who doesn't like to take meds or you just don't want to treat it with medications which is totally understandable because side effects are not always great the alternative option is kind of just to manage it on your own and if you are diagnosed with this you can get like a doctor's note to take naps when you're at school work or like whatever you may do on the daily and I know it sounds like kind of crazy like whatever just suck it up like you don't need a nap but when you have this like sleep disorder like you sometimes need it and when I say sometimes I mean usually you need naps so she like offered that to me but because I've been like kind of managing it on my own for the past like eight years I was like I would just rather try some medications because I already do all these other management um, things in my daily life as it is so like for me there's not much more I can do besides try something new like medications so with that doctor's note to allow you to take naps you can also have your doctor write out like a caffeine regimen if that makes sense so I personally hate coffee and I don't drink soda like very often at all and I don't like energy drinks so caffeine to me just doesn't help I don't really want to drink caffeine every single day if I don't have to but if you are someone who likes caffeine like go for it this would be perfect for you and then I kind of just have four things written on here you can find more online but I have four things written on here that you can do to kind of help your symptoms but just kind of avoid like eating smoking and drinking alcohol or having caffeine before you go to bed those things can all just really help you have a better night's sleep and therefore not be sleepy during the day or not be as sleepy because you're still gonna be sleepy and along with those avoidances I would definitely just say exercise so if I were you I would either join like a cycling class join a yoga class like maybe even join a sports team or a club team at your at your school your exercise program will be a part of your schedule and you'll feel like you have to go to it it'll help you with like your weight maintenance and even your like energy level because if you're taking naps every day and you don't exercise and you're not necessarily eating great narcolepsy can definitely lead to some like obesity or weight gain okay so that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video I'm sorry it was so long but this is just something that I want to like bring awareness to people and also have other people become educated about it and I'm sure a lot of people are undiagnosed possibly watching this so even if I can just help one person with this my mission was accomplished so if you are someone who has any of these things that I've been talking about seriously ask me any questions or just talk to your doctor because I'm sure they'll have more answers than I can go check out my um, other vlog that I made I don't think I can link it twice up there but it will be in the description it's just talking about my um, actual sleep test and how I was diagnosed so that's really interesting I'm going to leave you guys with a fun fact it was interesting because when I was researching this I found that Jimmy Kimmel I don't know if you guys know who that is he's like a late night show host um, he actually has narcolepsy so he's one of the only like celebrities that I knew um, that have narcolepsy so that was just a little interesting fact but that is it for this video I hope you guys learned something and if you did or have any questions please chat with me in the comments I will seriously answer any questions if you want to see more of my daily life then just follow me on Instagram my name is always on the bottom here and in the description as well give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it because that will definitely allow YouTube to spread out this video for everyone to see I would greatly appreciate that also if you like this video and you're not already subscribed to my channel hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I know you want to see me in your feed in the future. I post once a week, sometimes twice a week, depending on my schedule, but I literally have to go because my class starts in like five minutes. So I will see you guys in my next video and I hope you enjoyed. Bye guys.